Across the sandy beaches and rocky shores of Nova Scotia, I was determined to find one of the Atlantic coast's most iconic critters. From my memories of growing up here, I had convinced myself that they were hiding under every rock, plastering the sides of every tide pool. In reality, it took days of dedicated searching across multiple beaches until finally, in one unassuming tiny shallow sandy little puddle of a pool, I managed to find exactly one starfish. Or as scientists would prefer we call them, sea stars. That's to make absolutely clear that this is not a fish. In fact, it's not much like any other animal on Earth. Sea stars belong to the class Asteroidea, or wait for it, star-like, in the phylum Echinodermata, which in turn means spiny skin. Same group of animals as sea urchins, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. They might not look like they have much in common, but they all exhibit pentaradial symmetry, a five-sided or star-like body plan that is unique to echinoderms. And all of them are, well, they're weird. They're very weird. Even the common everyday Atlantic sea star. I mean, for a start, we could talk about how they can just ditch one of their five limbs as a defensive measure and then regrow them, or even better, grow an entire body back from a detached limb. We could talk about how they eat by ejecting their stomachs out to envelop their prey, digesting them, and then sucking their stomachs back in. We could talk about how they don't have brains, or how they use filtered seawater in place of blood. But to give you a real idea of how fascinating every single aspect of the sea star is, why don't we zoom way in on just their feet. See, one thing that sets sea stars apart from other echinoderms is their skeleton. Sea urchins and sand dollars have fused bony plates that make them less mobile. Sea cucumber skeletons have been reduced to microscopic ossicles of calcium carbonate. But sea stars have bony plates that function like flexible joints, so they get protection and mobility, thanks to hundreds and hundreds of these. Each of these little tube feet is a little miracle, doing multiple jobs for the sea star in some unexpected ways. For one thing, they don't directly work on muscle power. They run on hydrostatic pressure. The sea star forces water into the tube to expand and extend it, and relaxes to retract it. Those simple actions, the feet on the leading edge expanding as the feet on the trailing edge retract, performed in waves over hundreds of feet, propel the sea star over the ocean floor at a blistering clip of about 15 centimeters a minute. And those feet don't just provide locomotion, but adhesion. Sea stars can climb up rocks just as easily as moving across sand. But the grab and release action they use there is unusual as well. Lots of animals who can climb walls, maybe most famously geckos, do so using physical structures. Gecko footpads have millions of tiny hairs to give them their grip, it's the same deal with insects. But sea stars naturally just have to do things the weird way. Every single time every single one of those feet reaches out, it's doing a rapid chemical gluing and ungluing. The foot secretes an adhesive substance to stick it to the surface, and when it's time to let go, it secretes a second substance to break the adhesive bonds and free the foot. And those feet ain't just for walking or climbing. Turns out they're for eating, too. Sea stars love feeding on bivalves like mussels, clams, and scallops. And it's that same strength of that chemical adhesive on their feet that lets them split open the shells to get at the meat inside. And if that's not enough for you, they even respire through their feet, with a thin membrane at the tips allowing for gas exchange. Just like every other part of the sea star, a miraculously weird set of adaptations. There are more than 2,000 species of sea star worldwide, from the intertidal to 6,000 meters down in the abyss, from polar regions to the tropics. A new species was just discovered in Japan. And in the Atlantic coast littoral environment, they're what's known as a keystone species, so crucial to the proper functioning of the food web that their presence or absence alone is a great indicator of the health of the whole ecosystem. So, weird or not, whatever it is they're doing, Boy, is it ever working. If you're enjoying these videos, consider throwing me a few bucks a month on Patreon. It is the best possible thing you can do to ensure that they will keep coming.